Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith. It's good to have you here. Uh, just a few webcasts ago, I talked about the New Horizons space mission to Pluto. And I talked about how much I love stuff like that. And I do agree I love stuff like that. I want to talk about a different kind of science mission today that made the news recently. Uh, it's not exactly big news, but it had uh, scientist Stephen Hawking involved. And usually when he's involved, often it makes a few more headlines, so you may have seen it. It concerns SETI. Now, if you don't know what SETI is, uh, it's spelled S-E-T-I. It's an abbreviation for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Essentially, it was started by uh, folks like uh, Carl Sagan, one of my early childhood heroes, and Frank Drake, uh, another famous scientist. And you have all these uh, telescopes, like radio telescopes, observing the sky looking for signals, radio signals, that might indicate the presence of intelligence life, intelligent life away from Earth. Uh, for instance, here on Earth, even though we're broadcasting television uh, footage to each other, you know, from radio stations and television stations, and so we have all this radio signals and television signals, we're broadcasting them to ourselves, but it's really radiating into space. So if there were, say, Martians running around on the planet Mars, uh, they could actually pick up these signals if they were looking for them, and they would know that, you know, that signal, it's intelligently made. It's not like something random. There must be some kind of life on that planet. So we're trying to do the same. We're scouring the heavens for signs of intelligence. Well, that research got a big boost recently in funding. According to Live Science, as they reported on July 20th, in their article, Is E.T. Calling? Massive Search Will Scour Cosmos for Intelligent Signs, uh, they write that a new $100 million initiative uh, is inviting the world's top minds to scour the universe for signals from distant planets. Uh, the big investor is apparently Yuri Milner. It says, Yuri Milner, a billionaire particle physicist and investor, announced the 10-year breakthrough initiatives at the Royal Society in London with other top scientists, including physicist Stephen Hawking, as well as SETI or SETI pioneer Frank Drake. Now, they actually have a quote here from Hawking where he says, somewhere in the cosmos, perhaps, intelligent life may be watching these lights of ours aware of what they mean. It says, or do our lights wander a lifeless cosmos, unseen beacons announcing that here on one rock, the universe discovered its existence. Uh, so anyway, they're very excited about that initiative in the hopes that just maybe we will find some kind of signs of intelligent life. Well, the SETI initiative prompts me to ask two questions. I have two questions for SETI. One, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence where we're just looking for the smallest of signals that indicate something non-random, uh, something generated by intelligent life, something indicative of intelligence. It's considered a serious scientific endeavor. Uh, people generally don't question that. They think it's a worthwhile thing. So I'd want to ask, what about the search for intelligent life indicated by DNA. DNA is amazingly complex. It has every appearance of a biological programmed code. Uh, hopefully you've read our article in the Tomorrow's World magazine about DNA. In fact, when you look at it with the, the genomic code, the epigenetic code on top of that, it screams intelligence. If we would hear just some stream of signals, uh, like, a, like a sequence of prime numbers, as depicted in the movie Contact, actually based on Carl Sagan's book, if we saw that as some incontrovertible evidence of intelligent life, why in the world does DNA not scream at us intelligent life, that someone designed that? When we look at the coordination amongst all the laws of the universe and physics and everything around us, and we see a beautifully coordinated creation, why doesn't that provide us a signal that there is intelligence behind all of this, that there is some being who might fit the description of God in the Bible? So that's my first question. My second question is how long do we have to listen and hear nothing before we conclude we might be alone. 
uh, actually, there's a book that's a, a favorite book of mine from the past uh, called Rare Earth. It's part of what I'm juggling up here, the book Rare Earth by Doctors Ward and Brownlee. And it's a beautiful book. These guys are, they're definitely evolutionists themselves. They do believe that life evolved. But they argue in the book that as opposed to being common, uh, like Frank Drake had hypothesized in the past, just like Carl Sagan did, that intelligent life, even if you grant evolution as something that might be true, which I don't, but they do, that intelligent life is probably exceedingly rare. In fact, the subtitle of their book is Why Complex Life is Uncommon in the Universe. And it's a compelling case. And it has compelled many people to reconsider the likelihood there's life out there. In fact, in an old article, 2006, uh, from the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, now there's a title, uh, on their website, uh, they also have a magazine called Skeptical Inquirer, uh, Peter Schenkel, one of their professional skeptics, has an article titled, SETI Requires a Skeptical Reappraisal. And he writes in the article, in the interest of science and sound skepticism, I believe it is time to take the new findings and insights into account, to dampen excessive SETI euphoria, and to adopt a more pragmatic and down-to-earth stand, compatible with facts. He says, we should quietly admit that the early estimates that there might be a million or a hundred thousand or ten thousand advanced extraterrestrial civilizations in our galaxy may no longer be tenable. He says there might not be a hundred, not even ten such civilizations. And so I want to ask SETI, when does the listening stop? When do we decide that we really might be unique in all of creation, the only real physical intelligence in the universe? You know, it's interesting, Stephen Hawking in this article from Live Science had a quote. He said, concerning whether there is or is not intelligent life out there, he says, either way, there's no bigger question. It's time to commit to finding the answer. Well, I would disagree with Mr. Hawking. I would say the question whether or not a supreme God exists is a far larger question. And I would also say that it is far past time to committing to finding out that answer. I hope that you've enjoyed the webcast here, and I hope that you'll check out our other ones, our website at tomorrowsworld.org, as well as our sites on Facebook and Twitter.